Hi everyone and welcome back to Newegg TV. My name is Paul and this is the ASRock X79 Extreme 9 motherboard. This motherboard is a special request from one of our YouTube viewers, so we're, uh, we're, we're making a video for it. You are welcome. And uh, for starters, we're going to talk about some of the technology integrated in, into this motherboard and there's a lot of it. So uh, we'll start off with PCI Express Generation 3. Uh, that's PCI Express 3.0. We'll see some of those video cards starting to come out next year in 2012. And uh, that basically provides additional bandwidth for your PCI Express cards and that PCI Express 3.0 controller is actually integrated onto your Sandy Bridge E processor. Speaking of Sandy Bridge E processors, this is a Sandy Bridge E processor motherboard. It, it sports the Socket 2011 socket. Uh, it has the X79 chipset, which is the only chipset out right now for Sandy Bridge E. Uh, and uh, that's all we have on the front of the box. Let's move to the back where there's a lot of additional information. We'll talk about a lot of this stuff when, once I get this out of the box, uh, but for, we do have some XFast USB, which uh, essentially gives you additional power. Um, actually, th this is XFast USB, which it gives you additional uh, throughput over USB, so additional uh, faster USB 3.0 speeds uh, if you use the XFast USB software. Uh, you get also the XFast charging uh, function, which basically allows you to charge devices more quickly. Um, essentially it will give you more power out of your USB ports. It is compatible with the um, BC 1.1 standard, uh, which will allow devices to pull more milliamps of power out of your USB charging port and charge your devices more quickly. Also compatible with Apple devices. Uh, we got dual Broadcom LAN. One of them is integrated onto the motherboard. One of them is on the little riser sound card that you get along with it. Uh, teaming is available with those uh, LAN ports, so very nice to have that. Uh, there's more PCI E Gen 3 stuff. We get a graphical UEFI. UEFI is the new standard. Uh, it's sort of the successor to the BIOS, but a lot of people still call it BIOS because that's kind of ingrained. But you get a graphical layout with that. You can use your mouse. You get a system browser so you can browse the different functions. Uh, in this motherboard you get XMP 1.3 support, which is the Intel's extreme memory profile for your high-speed memory that you get for your motherboard. You can plug in the XMP profile for your memory and uh, it will automatically set up all your timings and memory speeds. Uh, you also get a Magix Multimedia Suite. And then uh, going back up here, you get XFast LAN, which is, uh, again, a software utility that works with those Broadca Broadcom gigabit network ports. It'll allow you to prioritize uh, your different software to make sure that you're getting uh, the fastest speed possible, for instance, for your game, especially if you're doing something like downloading uh, something in the background. You also get some real-time analysis. And uh, again, back here for your XFast RAM, uh, which uh, allows you to do a few different things, actually. Um, I have not worked with this personally, but according to the information here on the box, uh, it does have a RAM caching function, so you can actually cache some of your important stuff to the RAM and access it there rather than off of your hard drive or SSD, which is much, much faster. Also, if you're using a 32-bit operating system, it does give you a function that will allow you to access the memory over about the 3.2 gigabyte mark. Um, and personally, if you are using this motherboard, I recommend going with a 64-bit operating system installed, but if that's all you've got, then uh, it does allow you to do that. Uh, also enhances your internet surfing and extends the SSD or hard drive lifespan by caching that stuff to the RAM uh, rather than your hard drive. A little bit more information here before we get into the motherboard itself here on the box. Uh, we got digital power delivery, uh, which gives you more stable power delivery, especially for overclocking. Uh, you got high quality gold capacitors uh, for stability and lifespan. You got the Hyper Duo Plus technology. Uh, now, if you're not familiar with X79, the X79 chipset, but if you are familiar with the recent Intel Z68 chipset, that had, had Intel Smart Response Technology, which allowed you to cache important data to an SSD, pair that up with a hard drive, and increase your hard drive performance. X79 does not have that function built in, but uh, ASRock has uh, provided their own utility for performing that same function to give you uh, additional speed from your hard drive by pairing it with an SSD. Uh, also, you get 16 plus 2 phase power delivery for your CPU. You get that riser card I was mentioning, a Sound Blaster uh, riser card for dedicated audio. And uh, this does have a chipset fan, but it is an X-Fan, a smart cooling design. So uh, for those of you who are not big fans of chipset fans, haha, uh, they can uh, at times be loud, at least in uh, motherboards in the past. But this is a smart cooling fan, so it will only actually spin up when it's necessary, when the chipset gets hot enough. That's about enough for the box. So let's take a look at the accessories next.
So here's the motherboard, very well protective, protected in its box, but we're going to start off with our accessories. And uh, for starters, on this side, we have an SLI bridge. This motherboard is capable of SLI or Crossfire X configurations. They've provided you with a special SLI bridge here due to the spacing of the PCI slots on the motherboard, but that's if you're going to go with a three-card solution. We have triple slot spacing for the first couple PCI Express slots and a double slot for the lower one. So that's a rigid PCI Express SLI bridge. Here is the little riser card we were talking about. It is the ASRock Game Blaster, supported by uh, Sound Blaster. It has a THX True Studio Pro, EAX Advanced, Advanced HD technology for your sound. It's got uh, your sort of basic uh, 1 8 inch connectors here. They're gold plated. Uh, you actually have that other Broadcom Ethernet port integrated right there. You get an optical audio out. You also get a coax audio out. So lots of audio connected connectivity options there via that riser card. Fits in a PCI Express 1 slot. Uh, this is just a little power adapter. Molex 2 serial ATA. Here's another one of those. So you get a couple Molex to SATA adapters for some additional flexibility in routing your power cables. Here are all your serial ATA ports. These are, of course, compatible with any version of serial ATA, revision 1, 2, or 3. Uh, we have 246 of them total, and three of them have L brackets on one end. You also get this little guy, which I cannot see inside here, but my spidey sense is telling me, yes, I, that's, a, that's an SLI bridge for a two-card SLI setup. If you're going with Crossfire X, generally those Crossfire X bridges, which are different from SLI bridges, are included uh, with your Crossfire X capable video card. This is a PCI bracket for the back of your case for USB 3.0. This is your motherboard input output shield for the back of your case. All of your color coded ports there so you can tell what's what. Over here we have the uh, requisite uh, manual for the motherboard, X79 Extreme 9 with all different languages and in installation procedures. Make sure to keep that on hand while you're doing your build. You also get a software disk here with drivers and whatnot. Uh, best to download the latest drivers from the ASRock website, but keep that on hand. Especially helpful if you do your initial Windows install and your uh, and your LAN port is not recognized because you've got to get your LAN port up and running in order to access the internet and download those updated drivers. Moving right along here. In this pouch, we have a cool little bracket here that ASRock includes. Uh, this is a USB 3.0 bracket. There are some screws. And uh, it's sort of a dual-use thing. You can use this PCI bracket if you want to mount that to the back of your case. But if you've got a 3.5-inch slot at the front of your case, you can mount a couple USB 3.0 ports there. It has a 20-pin USB 3.0 header. And uh, you don't lose this 3.5-inch uh, slot completely because they have uh, handily also included a 2.5-inch mount right there on the bracket, too. So you can mount an SSD or a, any 2.5-inch drive right there and get a little bit more out of the space. You also get an ASRock uh, media review summary, which is not for you guys. That's probably not included in, in the actual thing. Usually media review stuff is made for people like me, but I haven't even looked at it. I'm, I'm just winging this. Here's some supplemental material for your uh, motherboard manual, and here is a software setup guide for the software utilities included on that DVD. Let's move on to the motherboard itself. And here at last is a look at the motherboard itself. As you can see, we have a dark brown PCB in the background. The rest of the components on the motherboard are all gray, black, and gold for a nice clean look overall. Uh, let's start out with the wide shot here to point out all of the fan headers, apart from the CPU fan header, which is right here, four pin. You also have a three pin uh, chassis fan header right here, another three pin over here, and then three more down here at the bottom, a four pin, a three pin, and another three pin. So, Apart from the CPU, you get five extra fan headers for your chassis fans, one of those being a four-pin PWM fan header. Uh, now let's start off here in the bottom right, and uh, let's talk about some of the features of this motherboard. So for starters, well, there you have those fan headers I just mentioned. You do get a surface-mounted debug LED there, so you can use that to troubleshoot if you have any problems after your build first gets set up. You get surface-mounted power and reset buttons right here. So if you're doing an outside of the box build, you'll easily be able to start and restart the uh, system up. 
Next to that, you get a USB header. This is actually a front panel header. Oh yeah, front panel headers are right here, and this will port a couple USB 2.0 front panel headers right there. Uh, moving along to the left here, another USB 2.0 header right there, uh, a couple infrared headers. You also get a clear CMOS jumper right there. There's also a clear CMOS button on the back of the motherboard. And then you get a COM header and finally a FireWire header. And those are all your front panels. Now also, uh, for front panels, usually you have an audio front panel. And that's actually uh, mounted on the sound card here that I showed you earlier. So there's your front panel HD audio or AC97 audio header. Also get an SPDIF uh, output on that. And uh, while I'm at it, I might as well mention, uh, I might have said sound blaster earlier and I'm actually not seeing sound blaster anywhere. The, the chip in here is a sound core 3D sound chip. It is made by Creative who also makes a sound blaster but one of the benefits of having that dedicated uh, uh, sound card on there is that it actually offloads sound processing from the CPU so you get more CPU per performance by having that de dedicated sound card. Let's continue with the motherboard itself. Uh, let's talk about PCI slots because it's got quite a few of them. As you can see here, there's one, two, three, four, five full length uh, PCI Express slots, uh, typically 16X. Top one here is wired for 16X. Uh, this one here is wired for 8X. This one here is also wired for 16X, another 8X, and another 8X down at the bottom. So if you're going to be going with a multiple card solution, you'll put your first video card here in the top. Uh, you'll put your second video card here in the fourth slot and you'll put your last video card down here in the sixth slot. So you get triple slot spacing for your top cards there. If you add another one uh, and the third, you will have double slot spacing. Again, this motherboard is compatible uh, with three card Crossfire X or uh, three card SLI for NVIDIA or AMD solutions. Uh, just bear in mind, you can also do uh, quad Crossfire X or quad SLI um, if you're using video cards that have two GPUs on each video card. So lots of options there. Also here you get a single speed uh, PCI Express slot and uh, that's pretty much it for our PCI Express area. Moving over here to the right, uh, we have our chipset. That's our X79 chipset right there underneath this fan. Again, that's the X fan, so it's only going to spin up if uh, it actually requires it, if there's enough heat there going over your peripheral controller hub. Uh, speaking of the PCH, let's move over here and oh my gosh, look how much SATA we have on this motherboard. It's absolutely absurd. This is, uh, for those of you who were maybe a little bit disappointed with the X79 serial ATA offerings because uh, preliminary reports said that, that X79 was going to have a lot more SATA, we ended up with the same amount of SATA that you get with uh, P67 or Z68 chipsets. That being these six ports right here. So these six ports on the right are all controlled by your X79 chipset. Uh, we have four, four ports here that are SATA revision 2, 3 gigabit per second. Uh, the two right here are going to be your fastest ports on the motherboard. Those are SATA revision 3, 6 gigabit per second, again controlled by the X79 chipset. We have six additional serial ATA slots right here. These are all controlled by Marvel add-on cards, and there's actually uh, two Marvel ad types of Marvel add-on chips. So if you remember at the beginning of the video, I mentioned this Hyper Duo Plus function that they've added on, and that is for the Marvel. And uh, let me let me verify right over here real quick with my notes. The Marvell SE9220 chip controls these two ports right here, and those are the ones you want to use, set it up in RAID mode, and uh, those will allow you to do that SSD caching function that they've added on. We've also got four more Serial ATA Revision 3 ports right here, and those are controlled by our Marvell SE9172 chips. Uh, there's two more Serial ATA ports, eSATA ports on the back of the board I'll show you. So. There's just, uh, what is that, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14 total serial ATA ports on this motherboard. Crazy, lots of connectivity options. Uh, moving up the side, we have some USB 3.0 front panel headers. Forgive me, I'm losing my balance here. USB 3.0 front panel headers, you get two of those. Uh, you also get four more, serial AT er, four more USB 3.0 ports on the back, so you get a total of 2, 4, 6, 8 USB 3.0 ports. You get a 24-pin uh, motherboard main power connector right there. And uh, that brings us over to the CPU area. And uh, again, this is the 2011 socket for Sandy Bridge E processors. Make sure you get a compatible one. There's a socket right there. It's got this universal bracket, so uh, no need to mount a back plate for the vast majority of socket 2011 aftermarket CPU heatsink fans. And uh, look at all of our DIMM slots. We have a total of eight 
dim slots here. This supports the quad channel memory spec uh, for the IMC on your Sandy Bridge E processor. Uh, the memory is compatible with DDR3 uh, and it goes overclock speeds up to 2400 megahertz. So um, lots of connectivity there. And uh, if you're just using four gig dims, you can get eight times four, 32 gigs of memory in there. Uh, if you uh, upgrade to eight gig dims, you can fit up to 64 gigs of memory in here and uh, it's just an absurd amount of memory. If you're going with that much, you probably want to look for a solution like a RAM disk or RAM cache to make use of that memory and uh, speed up your system using some other functions. Uh, but nice to have all that expansion. Way up here at the top, we have two 8-pin uh, EPS supplemental CPU power connectors. That is because we have that 16 plus 2 phase power delivery for the CPU that's under this, uh, under this heat spreader right here. Uh, you want to plug both of those in, especially if you're going to be overclocking, to make sure you get the max amount of juice to your processor. Uh, speaking of the heat spreader here, this one is right above uh, your 16-phase power delivery. It's got a heat pipe design. It goes over here to the left and uh, right there near your rear panel exit, so uh, plenty of cooling there for your VRMs. And uh, again, some nice, uh, some nice coloring and some nice gold highlighting there for your uh, viewing pleasure. Finally, right here, we have a four-pin Molex connector, and that is what you will want to plug in to provide some extra power to, to your PCI slots if you're going with a SLI or Crossfire X solution. And finally, let's move on to the inputs and outputs on the back of the motherboard. You'll notice there's fewer here than you usually see, and that's uh, because you got that riser card for your, uh, for your sound, which means there's no actual sound ports on the back here. But uh, you have a PS2 connector there for a mouse or a keyboard. You have uh, two, four, six USB 2.0 uh, ports. So you got plenty of USB 2.0 on the back. Uh, there's that clear CMOS button that you can push to easily clear uh, your BIOS settings from outside of the case without having to dig in and do that jumper version. Uh, you got a Firewire port right there. You got the other Broadcom Gigabit LAN port right there. Again, you can team that with the one on the riser card for uh, enhanced speed for your uh, LAN connectivity. Uh, there's the four USB 3.0 ports I mentioned, and finally, those eSATA ports, uh, again controlled by that Marvell controller, and there's a, both c capable of SATA revision 3 speeds up to 6 gigabits per second. And that's going to wrap it up for this video. Once again, this has been the ASRock X79 Extreme 9 motherboard for Sandy Bridge E processors with the 2011 socket and the X79 chipset. I'm Paul with Newegg TV. If you enjoyed today's video, please head over to our Newegg YouTube channel. Don't forget to subscribe for more tech videos. Thanks a lot for watching, and we'll see you next time.